In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one style question on the capitalization of borrowing costs. Now, there is a difference here between the approach adopted under IFRS and US GAAP. It's only a small one, really. But at the end of the day, many of those details where IFRS and US GAAP diverge are pretty minute. Having said this, I'm quite sure that if a question on this topic comes up in the exam, knowledge of this little difference will be tested. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want you to have a go at. Casters Corporation, a company reporting under IFRS, issues a 20-year 10 million euro bond bearing interest at 5% per annum to finance the construction of a new corporate headquarters building. Construction of the building is completed after three years from the bond issue. During this period, Casters earns €300,000 from the temporary investment of surplus bond proceeds. What is the amount of interest which casters will capitalize as part of the cost of the building? A. 1.5 million, B. 9.7 million, or C. 1.2 million euro. As always, let's start with a little theory. When a company is constructing an asset like an office building, it obviously includes in the carrying amount of that asset or book value of that asset, the various costs of construction. So I guess the cost of materials used, the cost of labor, and all those things which you would traditionally associate with the construction process. However, if the asset being constructed is one which takes a substantial amount of time to get ready, And you can safely assume that an office building is precisely such an asset. We should also include in its carrying amount any borrowing costs directly associated with the construction. And including these costs in the carrying amount or book value of the asset is generally referred to as their capitalization. Let me, however, stress that this is only possible in respect of costs incurred until the asset is actually ready for use. So, in this case, we've got an office building whose construction is funded via a 20-year bond issue. The amount borrowed over here at time zero. So, let's have a timeline with a maximum of 20 years. Now, over here, we are borrowing 10 million. The coupon rate is 5% per annum, so times 5%, uh, which means an expense of 10 million times 5%, that's half a million per year. Uh, so let's have half a million over here as the time one outflow. Let's have the same thing over here, half a million over here, half a million. And this is naturally going to go on for the entire 20 year period. What we are supposed to do is capitalize borrowing costs related to the construction as long as that construction is still in progress until the asset is ready. The question tells us that construction of the building is completed after three years, implying that we should only be capitalizing these initial three lots of half a million or 1.5 million of borrowing costs in total. Now, I really want to make sure 
that you understand what this means in the context of the balance sheet and the income statement. Let's imagine that over here under assets, we've got cash. And slightly lower down, we've got the office building, which is being constructed. Now, under cash, we'll have an annual outflow of half a million in interest or coupon payments. So a negative or downward arrow 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, meaning outflows. And this is naturally going to go on for 20 years time. Like we said before, uh, all the way up to the bond's maturity date. Capitalizing the first three years of borrowing costs, like we said over here, means that these outflows, this one, this one, and this one, are going to be matched by an equivalent increase in the carrying amount of the office building under construction. So up 0 0.5, up 0 0.5, and another upward arrow of 0 0.5, which um, is obviously going to continue all the way up to and including year three. However, once the building is ready, once construction is over and finished, any subsequent costs are taken to profit or loss or the income statement. So let me have PL over here and note that starting in year four, so this is going to be our year four PL. Uh, and obviously further PLs as well, but starting in year four, this 0 0.5 is taken as an expense to the income statement as a traditional interest or finance cost. Now, for the tricky bit, what should we do with the information that there was 300,000 euro of income generated from the temporary investment of surplus bond proceeds? And I guess you can easily imagine the scenario here. The company raises 10 million euro needed to finance the construction with a single bond issue right at the very beginning. But the entire amount isn't really needed straight away. So some of it gets invested and quite naturally that will result in some income being, being generated from the temporary investment of borrowed funds. Well, this is where you have to be extra careful to check whether the company is reporting under IFRS or US GAAP because the rules diverge in this respect. So let's write down income from temporary investment of borrowed funds. And let's have separate arrows for their treatment under IFRS and US GAAP. Okay, under IFRS, this income reduces the borrowing costs capitalized. So reduces borrowing costs capitalized. So the 0 0.3 million, which we may assume the company generates as a cash inflow, somewhere over here, so a positive plus upward pointing arrow of 0 0.3 would partially offset the borrowing costs already included in the cost of the office building of the asset. So this is an upward arrow and over here we're going to have a downward pointing arrow of 0 0.3 million, an offsetting arrow uh, relative to the previous positive ones of 0 0.5 each. Now, this produces an overall net amount of 1.2 million in overall costs capitalized. On the other hand, if we were following US GAAP, which we're not in this question, but if we were, this income would be taken directly to P and L. So let me just simply write P and L over here. And we would leave the amount capitalized 
as it was, so the original 1.5 million. However, seeing as this was an IFRS-based question, we can identify the correct answer as C, 1.2 million. And let me just write that answer down over here.